Since this BTF hardware came out, there's been one thing that I've wanted to do this entire time, and that was build a custom water-cooled PC where all the cables were hidden and some of the water cooling was hidden. Basically, to make a PC in real life look almost like a render. Hmm, what an interesting idea. Now, this is not your typical Gear Seekers build video. This is something different. Uh, it, it's something more. So I want you guys to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, but make sure you stick around to the end because we've got more to talk about. Let's do a learning thing. probably already guessed that we're custom water cooling this PC. We're using a Corsair XR5 360mm radiator. Now Corsair makes a white version of this, but what fun would that be? We wouldn't get to do any modding. And I wanted to show you guys how you could paint your own radiators. You could even use this to paint your all-in-one liquid cooler as well. First of all, we're gonna need some methylated spirits. This is to clean up all of the things. Trust me, you're gonna wanna get some of this. Next up, we want some paint. I recommend this Rust-Oleum paint. This is a paint and primer in one, and we're painting this white, so we have the ultra matte white color. Next up, you want a Scotch-Brite pad. You don't need to use fine grit sandpaper. This is better for scuffing up radiators for painting, if I'm being honest. I've done this heaps of times. You'll want some gloves. You don't want to get any nasty paint. You don't want metho. You don't want anything on your hands whatsoever. Now, we are not painting the fin stack or the core of this radiator. You don't need to, and I probably would recommend against doing this. 
We're gonna cover this up with some masking tape. You also want to plug up the inlet and the outlet for your radiator. These Corsair radiators typically come with plugs. So if you've got those laying around, put those in and you're good to go. If you're doing an all-in-one liquid cooler, then just mask up everything you don't want paint on. Also, we want to remove any logos. The easiest way to do this is when you scuff it up, it's probably gonna come off anyway. All right, first of all, we're gonna mask up the core and the fin stack of the radiator. Use some painter's tape. The best stuff to use is the stuff that doesn't leave any residue left over. It just makes it easier later when we're pulling it off. Make sure you apply that masking tape or the painter's tape to both sides. We don't want any paint in the core or on the fin stack for your radiator at all. It's just gonna be a bad time. We're only supposed to be painting the frame here. Next up, grab a scotch bright pad and we're gonna use this to scuff up the radiator. You don't need to push down too hard, but think of it as a alternative to sandpaper. It just scuffs it up just enough to paint. Also, you'll have noticed here that the Corsair logo on this radiator is now gone. That just came off from scuffing it up with that scotch pad. The most important part of painting is preparation. Now, methylated spirits is gonna help us with the prep. We're going to clean the radiator, get that metho, put some on a microfiber towel, and give it a wipe. You'll notice how dirty it is. All of the black residue left over from scuffing it up is still on there. We need to get all of that off before we can paint. Otherwise, it's gonna have a terrible finish. Also, something I would recommend doing is getting the radiator screws, get eight of them, and put them in each corner because when you're painting, it's gonna make it a lot easier if the radiator is not sitting on a flat surface and it makes it better just to apply the paint and it makes it easier to pick up the radiator if it's wet as well. All right, this is what it looks like, all prepped, ready to go. We're gonna need some paint. So obviously we're using that Rust-Oleum paint and primer, the two-in-one ultra matte stuff is awesome. Again, preparation is key. So make sure you give your paint a little bit of a shake. I hope you guys enjoy my shaking technique. The best way to apply this paint and primer is giving it lightly dusted coats You'll want to do this about 40 to 45 centimeters away, flip the radiator over and give it that initial coat. I would recommend doing at least two to three coats. Make sure before you apply the next coat that it's touch dry and take your time with it. Don't rush this process because if you take your time, the result is going to be awesome. For the painting of this radiator, I let it dry for about a week before I touched it because I wasn't in a rush to paint it. And I recommend if you're doing any case modding, take your time, especially if it's a PC you're wanting to keep together for a long time. Now we're gonna pull all that tape off as you're seeing in the clip here, and you'll want to remove the plugs in the inlet and the outlet. When you're removing the plugs, try not to get any paint in the inlet or outlet. It can happen, so if it does happen, I would flush your radiator out. If you're concerned about the inlet and the outlet having paint on it, don't worry, your radiator will seal because the o-rings on your fittings will still work even if there's paint all right let's get back to building using 14 millimeter acrylic tube. It's much clearer. However, be aware you'll need a hacksaw to cut it and the barrier for entry for building a custom water cooled PC with acrylic is much higher. Acrylic requires a lot more heat. It takes a lot more time and you can mess it up a lot easier, but the benefit is it looks the best. It's easily the clearest tube you could use that isn't glass. Now you can see here that I'm bending this tube. I don't 
really show this when I'm doing custom water cooled PCs, but because of the nature of this video, I wanted to show you. Here's a really cool trick my friend Simple Mods taught me years and years ago. If you want the perfect 90 degree bend, use the edge of your table. Once this acrylic tube cooled down and it's set, you can see how nice this 90 degree bend is. It's not too tight and it has the perfect radius on it. When you cut acrylic, the edges are typically sharper than PETG. However, when you deburr it, it's a lot smoother than PETG. So if you are doing custom water cooling, make sure you deburr your tubes. Otherwise you will split the O-rings inside your fittings. did something kind of custom here. I got Thermaltake P1000 opaque white coolant. This coolant has become a lot better over the years as well. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but because of the nature of this PC, I did it anyway. I mixed some Primo Chill View. This is the sterling silver color and I made it a light gray color. So when the coolant flows through this loop, you'll be able to see it moving.
I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a different PC build video. I know it's not our usual style, but that's kind of the point. I wanted to teach you guys a couple little tips and tricks that I've learned over the years doing modded PCs and custom builds and that kind of stuff. I know we don't do much of that here on the channel anymore, but that's gonna change. That's kind of why at the start of the video, I mentioned that when the BTF stuff came out, my first thought was, man, wouldn't it be cool to just do a custom water-cooled PC where there's no cables and it looks like a render and you can hide a couple of the tubes and you can do all that kind of stuff. I really, really like the idea of no cables anywhere. I've invented this in my head so many times and the fact that we have this kind of stuff now is cool. I think what's more interesting than anything, like the motherboard and the back connectors is cool, but the graphics card, the fact that the power comes through the motherboard and powers the graphics card that way with no cables is even cooler to me because when you do a custom water cooled PC, the power cables for the graphics card is always something that you have to take into consideration, especially if you're trying to make something look really clean. And now it's a non-issue. I don't have to worry about the power cable at all. Right. The graphics card we use is the Tough Gaming BTF card. This graphics card will only work on BTF boards. You can't power it any other way, but that's okay. That's kind of the point of these systems, right? No cables, no worries. Because this is a sponsored video, obviously there's things I need to talk about. ASUS is doing a massive global giveaway where they're giving you the chance to win a whole bunch of stuff to kickstart your gaming PC. And more specifically, BTF stuff, it's called the Ultimate Simplicity Giveaway. If you wanna enter, there's a couple of things you need to do. There's a link in the description down there if you wanna enter and try your hand at winning some of this cool BTF stuff. As well as that, if you're interested in buying any of this hardware, Umart here in Australia is selling all of it and there's a link to all of that down below in the description. Get amongst it, get keen. We're not giving away this one. This is my one, I get to keep this one. All right, ladies and gents, uh, that's just about gonna do it for us. I'm off to Taiwan. Goodbye. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And yeah, let us know what you think BTF means in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.